So today we're going to start a new unit called chemical composition. And so we're going to look at using lots of different conversion factors to calculate different quantities. So let's talk about why we might want to learn about these things. Okay, well, we've talked about chemical formula, but we haven't talked about how to determine a, how to calculate a chemical formula. And so in order to do that, we need to know how many of each type of atom is present. And so if we had a sample, we would basically need to count all the atoms and what type they were. Well, that can be a lot of work. Um, and so instead of counting them individually, to count things that are really tiny, we can weigh a certain amount and then use that as a conversion factor. Um, it's you know difficult to see an individual atom. We can't really look at an individual atom even with a really strongly powered microscope. And so we, we wouldn't be able to count them. And so this is the way that we're going to count them by weighing. And so that's kind of the theme of this whole unit. Okay, so the section that we're going to discuss today is called atomic mass. So mass of an atom. Okay, and so we've talked about how we can count these atoms by weighing them. So that's where atomic mass is going to become important. So let's say that you work at a candy store and a customer comes in wanting 1,000 jelly beans and 1,000 mints. Okay, well, you don't want to take five years to count all these out individually. So how would you fill their order? Okay, so take some time, maybe pause the video for a second to think about how you could get 1,000 jelly beans and 1,000 mints without counting them individually. So maybe use this space to write down some ideas and you might want to pause the video for a second. Okay, so go ahead and do that and then um, we'll talk about maybe what you came up with. Okay, so hopefully this is what you came up with. You could weigh a certain number of jelly beans to get an average mass. Ten is a good number. Um, if you picked five, five would be okay, but you wouldn't want to just do one because every jelly bean is a little bit different and so we need more than one to get an average mass. The objects don't need to have identical masses, and that's because we're going to use the average mass, and that's why we're taking more than one, because you wouldn't want to base your whole conversion factor on one jelly bean. Then we're going to use this conversion factor, so let's say 10 jelly beans weigh 5.2 grams. Okay, so that's a conversion factor relating number of jelly beans to mass. So we can use that conversion factor to figure out how much 1,000 jelly beans would weigh, and then we could weigh out that amount. And then if we wanted to also relate this to mints, we could develop a ratio between the weight of 10 jelly beans and the weight of 10 mints, and then use that conversion factor to figure out how much 1,000 mints would weigh. And so we can use this ratio to figure out the mass. And so this is where ratios are going to start to become really important, especially when we start relating them to chemical formulas and we're working between compounds. So we can have two samples containing different types of components. So let's say we have sample A and sample B, so jelly beans and mints or, you know, different elements. They will both contain the same number of components, so a thousand jelly beans, a thousand mints, if the ratio of the sample masses is equal to the ratio of the masses of the individual components of A and B. So we're going to take the mass of 10 jelly beans, relate that to the mass of 10 mints, and then we can use that ratio to calculate any quantity of both of those components. And so this would apply to jelly beans and mints, or atoms of different elements, or later on compounds in an equation, whatever. Okay, so now let's take that idea and relate it to chemistry through atomic mass. So let's say we have the reaction, carbon as a solid, that's what that S means, and, and we'll discuss a lot of this later, plus oxygen gas produces carbon dioxide gas. Well, we want to know how many oxygen atoms are required to convert a small amount of carbon to CO2 because we want to have the proper amount of reactants in order to produce our product. And so just like weighing to count jelly beans, we could weigh to count atoms because we can't count out individual oxygen atoms. So we need some way to relate weight to number of atoms, and that's what atomic mass does. Okay, and so if we're thinking about mass, a standard unit of mass is the kilogram, but kilograms are too big because atoms are so tiny, and so we need some other unit. And so what we've come up with is called the atomic mass unit, or an AMU. And so to relate AMUs to grams, 
1 AMU is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So very, 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 very tiny. Okay, and this is true for any atom this conversion factor would work. Okay, however many AMUs you have, you could convert them to grams using this conversion factor. Whoops, there we go. Okay, and later on what we're going to talk about is how to take AMUs and convert them to grams per mole. And so we'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's what's kind of coming up. Okay, so let's say that we want to count some carbon atoms. Well, we said we're trying to relate number of atoms to mass, so we need the mass. Well, we've talked about isotopes in the past. Remember, isotopes are basically the same element with different numbers of neutrons. And so the average mass for any element is due to the isotopes present for that element, and that's called the average atomic mass. And you can find these on the periodic table. Remember, the periodic table contains two numbers. One is the atomic number, which is the number of protons, and that's usually your small whole number. And then the other decimal number is that average from all the isotopes, and that's your average atomic mass. And so if we look up the element carbon, Carbon's atomic mass is 12.01 AMUs. And so if we have 1,000 carbon atoms, we can use this conversion factor for one carbon atom is equal to 12.01 AMUs to calculate the mass of 1,000 carbon atoms. And so then we can mass that out, and we would say that that was equal to 1,000 carbon atoms. So we're going to start with the information that we're given in the problem, and so that's 1,000 carbon atoms, and then we're going to set up our dimensional analysis, if you remember from the last chapter, okay, and then we're going to use this as our conversion factor. So because we want atoms to cancel, for every one carbon atom, we'll put it on the bottom, it weighs 12.01 AMUs, remember AMU is just another mass unit like grams and kilograms, and so if we do our math, we're going to take 1,000 times 12.01, we could divide by 1, but if you'll remember, that's not really going to do anything to our answer. And we get 12,010 AMUs of carbon. Remember, units are really important. Now let's go back and take a look at what we started with for significant figures. So here we have four significant figures because of the decimal after the last zero. So these are trailing zeros with a decimal, so that means that they do count. And so if we want four significant figures, one, two, three, four, we need to leave the zero here because it's a placeholder. But by not putting a decimal at the end, we're saying it does not count. And so that gives us four significant figures. And so 12,010 AMU of carbon is our answer. So we can mass out 12,010 AMUs, and that will give us approximately 1,000 carbon atoms. Okay, well let's say that we want to go the other direction, and we have a small pile of carbon atoms, and they weigh 3 times 10 to the 20th AMUs. And I want to know how many carbon atoms in that pile. Okay, well instead of counting them all out individually, which would be impossible because they're so small and time consuming, we're going to take our 3 times 10 to the 20th AMU, now because it's carbon, I can look at the periodic table, and I know that every one carbon atom is equal to weighs, so is equal to 12.01 AMU. And so I'm going to use that as my conversion factor again. This time, because I'm starting with AMUs, I want AMU on the bottom. I know a direct relationship between atoms and AMUs. And so atoms of carbon goes on top. And I know for every 12.01 AMU, there's one carbon atom. So this time, I'm taking my three times 10 to the 20th, and I'm dividing by 12.01 and multiplying by 1, which we know won't really do anything. So if I do this math, I'm going to end up with 2.50 times 10 to the 19th atoms of carbon, and I have three significant figures in my problem, and so I want three in my answer, and so that works. Okay, and so what we've talked about here is taking that atomic mass from the periodic table, using it as a conversion factor to convert between AMUs and number of atoms, and you can go both directions.
Okay, so what, I, what I'd like you to do is try these next two examples on your own. So you're going to find the mass in AMUs of 75 aluminum atoms. So I gave you a small hint there. Make sure you use your periodic table. I also put the answer at the bottom of the slide so you have room to show your work. If you don't get the correct answer, then let's talk about it in class and make sure that you don't have any questions. Okay, and so you can pause it here and try this one. I'm going to go on to the next example for you. So here's the next one. Find the number of atoms in 1,172.49 AMUs of sodium. Okay, so here's a small hint. Use the periodic table to find the number of AMUs in one atom. Okay, so that's the atomic mass on the periodic table. And here's your answer to this one with significant figures. So again, try this one on your own, and then we'll discuss it in class.